Welcome back, nerd boxers, to part four of Stu's Clues, where we unravel the Woodsboro conspiracy around his death, and to welcome Sydney home with open arms and a knife to the throat. seen the other videos I suggest you start there but first you need to stab the like button and then you need to subscribe or the only game you will be playing is who's going to die next in case you haven't been keeping up there are some ground rules we laid out in the first part of this series and we are going to expand on those right now starting with what you should be looking for in scream 4 which is the varying heights of Ghostface. Dewey is taller than both Sydney and Gale. Sydney is taller than Gale and Jill. In the one scene where Jill plunges her knife deep into Sydney's flesh, they are standing next to each other, but poor little Sid is slouching. Charlie is taller than Jill, but is shorter than Sydney. Deputy Haas is the same height as Dewey, but Perkins is an inch taller. Make sure you write these clues down in your handy dandy kill book. They will come into play later in this episode and the next. After Jenny and Marnie get carved like jack-o'-lanterns, a key detail was left out of the film. The crime scene where Jenny's body is hung from the ceiling fan, just like Casey Becker was hung from the tree. A little homage to Stu or was it Stu himself? The next morning Sydney arrives in Woodsboro in a rental car to promote her book, while Jill and Charlie are in school. Oh, this is Hall Pass with Robbie Mercer. Here with the luscious Olivia, don't look at my tips, I have a mind Morris. Here is my Woodsboro Massacre anniversary question. Somehow the evidence related to Jenny and Marnie's deaths is found in the trunk of her car. It's my rental. Seems to me like a third accomplice is involved, because there are an awful lot of plot holes if there isn't. And how else would you explain the phone calls and every ghost face attack after Billy and Stu? Which brings us to sweet sweet Olivia. Jill is with Kirby when Ghostface calls from Olivia's closet in the house next door. But for some reason Olivia can't hear the conversation being had between them and she is only a few feet away. Liar. I'm over this. I never said I was in your closet. <laughs> this is reminiscent of Sarah, Christine, and Stone's deaths in previous films. After Olivia is gutted, Sydney comes to save the day, but it only leads to her and Jill being sent to the hospital, where we see Charlie and Robbie are outside filming for their blog before talking with Gail. Meanwhile inside, Sydney and Jill are being looked at by medical staff. Due to the nature of Jill's wounds, it is likely that she is being stitched up when we see Sydney fire her publicist, Rebecca. Unfortunately for Sydney, she forgot what Stu warned her in Hollywood. Oh, it's hard being friends with you, Sydney. When you're friends with Sydney, you die. And in this case, Ghostface makes an exception by killing Rebecca in the parking garage before tossing her limp body off of the roof. If you were wondering where Robbie was when this happened, you can see him in the background of the police conference as the camera pans up. That person standing in the shadows with luscious locks and wearing a hoodie is most likely him because that person is dressed similar to him from a few minutes earlier. Plus the person throwing Rebecca from the building had to be strong enough to clear the bushes and sidewalk below because she landed on top of the van. And it sure the hell doesn't look like Jill has been lifting weights. I know you are saying 
that Jill should be done by now, and this deleted scene reveals that she was, but she was with her mom and her ex at the time. In another deleted scene we see that, the next night is Stabathon. Charlie and Robbie had arrived at the barn early to set up. Gives me the creeps a little, man. I know, it's fucking perfect. Gail arrives at the event just as it is kicking off and we see Charlie and Robbie are hosting the event while she sneaks up into the loft to set up her cameras. The problem is that Gail wants to become relevant again off of the name of Ghostface. Only she didn't plan on our killers filming their own movie, like we discussed in the second part of this series. Ghostface sabotages Gail's camera effectively luring her back inside and up into the loft. She passes by Charlie and Robbie who are talking to Kirby while the movie plays. Gail goes to fix her camera but notices one that she did not set up and it appears to be recording her. While she is distracted, out from behind a few hay bales, a taller than her ghost face attacks her. As the events unfold at the barn, Dewey does not have enough time to radio to Perkins and Haas who are killed by a shorter ghost face. Who is Jill? Because she has snuck out her bedroom window. Ghost face calls Sydney, warning her that they are looking to kill her family this time. Why are you doing this? Ah, friends count, but it's the family ties that cut deep. Am I right? What do you mean? The ones who care about most. And what's closer than family? The bond of blood. Don't. Because this call is different from the ones we heard before. The ones where Stu brings up the past. Sydney goes to get Jill, but is only able to find Kate. They try to escape through the front door, but they see Ghostface approaching in the reflection of the wind chimes forcing them to run for the back door where they are met by another Ghostface, who would have had to run all the way around the house to get there. This is likely Stu, because it would have been quicker for Stu to leave Stabathon and go directly to Jill's and because it is likely that Charlie would have been slowed by the police. Also remember, as we saw in the deleted scene, Robbie and Charlie drove to Stabathon together, so in order for Charlie to be under the mask he would have had to have Robbie with him. In our final scene Charlie and Jill talk about editing and uploading their kill footage. Charlie? Already taken care of. Man, I got great footage of my Robbie kill. Better than Jenny and Marty or Olivia even. Good, we'll cut and upload it later. Make it all traceable to Trevor. Uploading to where? Maybe to the blog where Richie, Amber, Jason, and Greg all become radicalized. Sydney wins again, but Stu has everything for his sequel, except the ending. As Sydney slinks away, it's time for another rewrite. In our next episode we reveal how Stu being the ghost face in the hospital could be true and it was all revealed in the opening act. screen content. Check out nerd boxes behind the scenes. Theories, Easter egg videos, and more. Until part 5 nerd boxers, sleep tight and be careful of who you trust. <laughs>